Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Who could use a good laugh today? Me, me, me. Everybody raising their hand out there? Let's go ahead and cover this nonsense. XRP price could go down to zero dollars. Zero dollars, zero cents by next February, says Alex Kruger. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for today? Is it uh, the opportunity to bust FUD? That's what I'm thankful for. This is so stupid, but I have to share this with you. This is fun. It's like a barrel of fun. Not like half of a barrel, an entire full barrel of fun. We're going to run through this. Uh, I've also got an article unrelated that I, I will share with you just because I found it interesting. Uh, it's from Amy Crypto. It's titled, Bitcoin can tackle fiat money's encouragement of consumerism. It says Michael, Michael Goldstein. Not he's not Michael Michael Goldstein. Like he doesn't have two of the same name. Like his first name is not also his middle name. It's it's just Michael Goldstein. Glad I could clear that up. All right, let's go ahead and dig in here. A model on XRP price developed. Wait, I didn't even say. Man, I'm messing everything up today. I'm sorry, guys. If you would please, before I get going any further, <laughs> please delicately tap that like button. And if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP and you appreciate opportunities to bust fun, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel so that you and I can be friends, maybe even best friends. A model on XRP price development predicts that the crypto asset will go to zero by next February. Ripple's XRP has underperformed, and plotting a linear regression predicts more crashes to a lower price range. <sighs> Audible sigh. I guess all sighs are audible. But anyway, uh, XRP is one of the assets that has remained stagnant in 2019 and unraveled further in the past month. Currently, the asset is at 21 cents. Uh, th this was written yesterday, by the way. Uh, still very far from the outlandish price predictions uh, for a hike to a few dollars. And here you go. Here's a tweet from Alex Kruger. By the way, who is Alex Kruger? Here he is right on your screen. Here's his Twitter uh, with a intimidating picture, by the way. Look at this. Uh, he does have a beautiful smile, though. I mean, if you're looking at the screen, I think you'll agree. It's just an absolutely beautiful smile. Um, so anyway, he, he describes himself as economist, trader, uh, Columbia MBA, not financial advice, but he's got 46,200 followers. What? That's a lot, right? 46,200. So people are listening to what this guy has to say. And here's what he tweeted out. Regressing XRP against time starting January 1st, 2018, using a linear regression forecast price to hit zero next February. So that's it. <laughs> it's, it's all over, guys. This is it. This is what's going to happen here, right? Um, <laughs> this is so stupid. I feel stupider for, like, covering this. I'm like, am I doing a bad thing by talking about this? Like, it's just, it's that dumb. But, I mean, I enjoy it. Anyway, there is no telling if Ripple's token... <laughs> of course, by the way, I should have cited this. This is from Bitcoinist.com, so maybe you're less surprised now. Uh, there's no telling if Ripple's token would behave according to the linear regression model, uh, but the asset has lost credibility, and there are no forces to lift the price. <laughs> Can I show... Let me, you wouldn't know why I'm laughing. Can I just... I'm just going to show you now. I was, I was trying to figure out what I would want to share this information with you. Take a look at this. Here's live CoinWatch. Let me just pull this up. We're not going to take a deep dive. I can show you something that is so obvious. Take a look at the top 10 cryptocurrencies. We're going to throw out number four because that's Tether. Uh, so that's going to obviously behave completely different than other cryptocurrencies. Take a look here. See where I'm highlighting right now. If you're driving, don't worry about it. But uh, if, if, you, if you can look at the screen, this is these are the weekly charts. They're, they're all miniature because, again, you know, it's just... It's it's a little site. There's a bunch of data, all right? But here's the weekly chart for the top 10. Here's Bitcoin. Here's Ethereum. Here's XRP. And again, you can keep going down the list. Ignore number four because it's Tether. But look at the other nine out of the top 10. The charts look um, almost exactly the same. You could say BSV is maybe a little bit different. But hell, even if you just want to look at the top three, like these are the same damn charts. So it, it's beyond stupid to point this out. A linear regression showing that XRP is going to zero dollars and zero cents in a couple of months, two, three months. Yeah, well, yeah, three months, whatever. Uh, no, that's freaking stupid because <laughs> all that's happening here is XRP and every other coin. It's following the actions. Of like you can see this with your own eyes. I'm sorry if you're one of those people that's a... Um, you know, a, a denier of, of coins being, a, especially XRP, being attached to the price action of Bitcoin. I'm sorry, use your eyeballs. Here it is. Uh, that's not going to change anytime soon. And it just goes back to what I was saying uh, in a very recent video. 
that uh, people are just not parsing out the differences between these coins. So it makes almost no sense that these coins, especially the top 10, it makes no sense for any of them to go to zero anytime soon. People have not figured this stuff out. But still, we have this silly article. All right. So, um, oh, by the way, a shout out to Robert Thompson. This is where I get it. I meant to, to do that a little bit earlier. Uh, thank you for tagging me along with the digital asset investor, my fellow XRP YouTuber. I very much do appreciate that. So, again, shout out to you, Robert Thompson. But anyway... So let's talk about XRP losing credibility. Uh, no, again, it's just makes that doesn't even make any damn sense. It's just reacting to Bitcoin. That's it. Almost exclu like that's it, right? Um, and then they write, even having a presence on Coinbase has not awakened mass in mass interest in XRP. Couldn't you say that about Bitcoin then? What the hell? Oh my lord. Uh, this, this is starting to steam my vegetables, I'm telling you. Additionally, parts of the community are downright hostile to Ripple Inc., suggesting XRP was pushed too aggressively. XRP is yet to receive clarity on its status as potentially being an unregistered security. Yes, okay, yeah, yet for the last uh, seven years, the SEC has let uh, Ripple run wild selling this the security of XRP. That is XRP. Are you kidding me? How, like, how, like, you have to be kind of dim to think that's even, a, like, a possibility. Uh, take a look here, though. Um, during the recent X, uh, price drop, uh, XRP fell way below the 25% mark uh, that was seen as a bounce area and slid as low as 21 cents before bouncing a cent. The XRP market also saw a trading anomaly this Monday, with trading volumes exceeding $9 billion uh, with no clear explanation. But the rally did not manage to lift the price. And I, I dispute that. So the, the, it's funny. The tweet in question comes from Jade, the XRP Martian, who is my fellow XRP YouTuber. And he writes, WTF is with XRP's volume. It's nearly 70% of its market cap right now. And yet the price is plummeting. Something seriously fishy is going on right now. So they use that as an opportunity to uh, you know, put them in a FUD article, which um, I, I didn't put it pull up for this uh, video, but he kind of... He wrote a tweet or something along the lines of, I don't know if I should be flattered to be included in a FUD article or angry. It was something to that effect, anyway. Uh, now, the answer for this is quite simply that XRP was oversold. I've covered, I've followed traders and chart analysts who have cited, um, and maybe some would dispute fine, but the, the, it seems to me the general consensus was uh, that, that that happens when a cryptocurrency is oversold. So, really, it's nothing really fishy. It's just the market behaving like a market, right? That's pretty much it. Uh, so there we go. Pure stupidity. All right, next. Uh, here's a tweet from Jay Kim. He uh, interviewed recently uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, and there's a quote here. I just wanted to share this with you. I just think it's a cool quote from Brad Garlinghouse. And he wrote, We put a man on the moon. We found water on Mars, yet you can't send a wire on Sunday. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> It is kind of funny when you think about it like that, right? But hey, this is what Ripple's seeking to fix. They are creating what they call the Internet of Value. All right, last piece here. Bitcoin can tackle fiat money's encouragement of consumerism, says Michael Goldstein. Recently, Michael Goldstein, president of Nakamoto Institute, was interviewed by Peter McCormick on the latest edition of the latter's What Bitcoin Did podcast. During the entire podcast, the duo discussed the advent of Bitcoin, which, as well as the falling trust and faith of uh, the citizenry in mainstream institutions and governments. Goldstein began by stating that people tend to second-guess those within the society who choose to express a different point of view. Once someone states that they don't like the way a government tries to handle a particular matter, those who abide by the system automatically assume that the naysayers are... Anarcho-capitalists, Goldstein said, talking about the plight of crypto proponents. The two then discussed the case of Ross Albright, or maybe it's Albright, that's probably how it said, uh, the founder of Silk Road, a darknet marketplace, who has now spent over six years in prison. Uh, McCormick had interviewed Lynn Albright, Ross's mother, nearly two years ago. Uh, Lynn Albright has been at the forefront of the campaign to release Ross Albright from prison, on the subject of the Albright case, the president of the Nakamoto, Nakamoto Institute said, quote, My understanding of the Catherine Forrest actual uh, ruling as the judge was effectively, we're throwing you in jail for double life, plus 40, because of your philosophy. It wasn't because he himself was engaging in these behaviors. In fact, the Silk Road itself 
had law, by the way, in the sense that uh, you are not allowed to sell stolen goods. All right, and then the piece states, McCormick responded uh, by putting forth a different view, stating that uh, after his discussion with Lynn, he came to the conclusion that Ross did commit crimes, uh, certain crimes under the law. However, McCormick feels that his sentence should be reduced to time served, which would be fair. And I don't really, to be honest, as far as the sentence there, I'm sure many of you in the world of crypto out there listening are familiar with this particular case. If not, it's fascinating just to just kind of look into it. I don't have a firm opinion as far as, and I say that just because I haven't like done actual research on this topic, but I don't have a firm opinion on whether or not uh, the, 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 the sentence that Ross got uh, was deserved. I don't know. I, I'm not saying yes or no, uh, but I will say that it seems intense. Um, I, it just it sounds like a lot on the surface, but again, that's why I want to say I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But I'm also going to say that given that I haven't researched it and I don't understand what the norms would be for cases li- like this, um, I, I don't have a firm opinion. But uh, a lot of people seem to have the opinion. That's why it would be kind of interesting to dig in further. Uh, a lot of people just have the opinion that they're making an example of him, and that's why the the, the sentence is so severe. And if it's that, if that's the case, I don't really like that. I don't conceptually. I'm not a huge fan of necessarily making a an example out of this this particular individual. But again, no firm opinion on this. And uh, if you have any interesting takes on this, I actually would be curious to hear it in the comments below. But uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate all the support, and I really hope you're having a fantastic Turkey Day out there. But uh, I better wrap up for the day. I, uh, I think I think Moon Bay is ready to head out so we can go see some family and uh, you know uh, eat too much turkey and have some adult beverages. It sounds like a killer time. But um, that's it for this video. I'm not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.